What's up, YouTube? Pokeprime here. Prime Rage and Deliver. You are week number two uh, recap for the NPBF. Not only have we had a very decent week of matchups, but we actually have our kill leaders set up and ready to show you guys in the back end of this recap, so definitely stick around for that. Um, we only had one forfeit this week to allow everyone to know. Uh, the Memphis Braybirds. Uh, coached by James, forfeited their match to the Grand Bulls, I believe it's Minnesota Grand Bulls, uh, coached by Sadie. So, only one forfeit this week, since there was two last week, one this week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have any next week. So, uh, I'm not going to stay here too long. Without further ado, let us head into the replays. Alrighty guys, the first game we are going to be covering this week is between the Cleveland Typhlosions, coached by Ethan, and the Port Elizabeth Politoes, coached by John. Um, the Politoes decide to bring the Don Fan, the Mega B Drill, the Darmanitan, the Kecleon, the Electros, and the Scrafty this week, while the Typhlosions bring their two offensive monsters, the Halucha and the Lycanroc Dusk, along with some support in Mega Pinsir, Togetic. Avalok and Superior. So without further ado, let us get into this beautiful matchup. We see an Electros lead taking on the Avalog, and it immediately gets knocked down low by that flamethrower from the Electros, which is then able to just click a clean Volt Switch and drop that table. Into the Dawn Fan we go as the Superior comes out. Beedrill is able to switch in pretty nicely, and that Leaf Storm miss, I don't believe, matters in the long run of this match. Um, that's something I want to make sure to do. I want to make sure to look at certain instances of hacks and see if they mattered or not as I'm going through my commentary. That Leaf Storm miss did not matter. Um, Beedrill uh, has semi-decent natural special defense stat, and unless he's scarfed... Uh, he wouldn't have been able to get that much damage off after that anyway, because Beedrill could have easily just U-turned or poison jabbed on it and killed it anyway. So, that's why that's perfectly fine. So he's going to swap out now and go out to his Lycanroc Dusk as Beedrill is going to go for a poison jab. Now, um, this next play I'll discuss a little bit. He is actually going to hard switch out, and I understand that play entirely. Um... Just because of the potential of Excel Rock. Excel Rock would have Tough Claws Excel Rock from a Lycan Rock Dusk more than likely would have O code the uh, B Drill. Because uh, B Drill's physical defense is piss, piss poor. Um, so I do understand that play entirely. Um, it's actually a pretty good play on this part. I uh, would not have clicked U turn there, although I believe. Based upon the poison jab damage, and I can't remember if bug resists rock, I think U-turn probably would have killed. But, um, it happens. What can you do? Uh, I, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But, um, next he's going to go into his crafty here, as we are going to actually see these splintered storm shards come out from the lichen rock dusk and do a very significant amount of damage, but it is resisted. And uh, a brick break to follow it up, but just barely the leftovers prevented the KO. And for some reason, um, I don't know if he predicted a swap there. Uh, I don't really know what he would have swapped into that would have wanted to take a fighting type move. Maybe he was predicting the Togetic potentially uh, to knock off its Eviolite, which I think would have been a fair, fairly decent play. I think if it had actually worked out, I think that would have been really cool. But um, it just unfortunately did not. Uh, so he is unable to uh, take out this Lycan Rock, as it is now going to be able to click Return and kill the Scrafty. He's going to go into Dawn Fan here, though. Uh, take an Outrage from this thing. I don't know why Outrage was the move there, but whatever. Uh, and he's going to be able to Earthquake and kill it off. Into the uh, Pincer here, and he's just going to start spamming Ice Shard. Um... Maybe a rock coverage move would have been better here uh, if he had it, but I'm assuming he probably didn't. And uh, the pincer just going to be able to click knock off and then return and knock this thing out. A knock off to this Electros is going to get rid of its Assault Vez, but the Volt Switch is still able to come out and KO the uh, Mega Pincer. And here is where the battle uh, gets interesting. Um, if 
per se, he had been a Scarfed Armanitan and just gone for a Flare Blitz right here, which would have been a no-drawback play if he was Scarfed Arm, which most of the time you should be Scarfed Arm. Um, I'd say about a, like a 90% time you should be Scarfed Arm unless your speed tiers work right or you have Sticky Webs, and then you can run something like Band or like Life Orb Sheer Force. But... Um, if he had been scarfed here, Flare Blitz would have just blown through the Halucha, blown through the Superior, and done significantly scary amounts of damage, or just straight up blown through the uh, Togete. However, you're going to see the Sky Attack with the Power of Pop, and Eoko the Darmanitan leaving complete room for this stupid bird to just sweep. Uh, the Fake Out here is actually pretty smart. He actually plays this very, very nicely with Kecleon. He's going to go for the Shadow Sneak here, which is actually going to allow him to dodge the Drain Punch. Uh, and then another Shadow Sneak is going to bring him down significantly low. And then all these Shadow Sneaks are going to bring him down significantly low, but it's just not enough. Just not enough. Maybe if he had gotten some of the higher rolls, he didn't get that 22% roll or whatever, he would have been able to pick up the win. Or at least lower the differential, but uh, it's going to be a 3-0 win in favor of the Cleveland Typhlosions, with Halucha picking up another clean four kills after its three kills and one death from the week prior. So, really, really well played about Ethan's party. got Halucha in there when he needed to, and got it rolling. So, that'll be it for that game. On to the next one. The next battle we'll be covering is between Kaz and the Peoria Phantoms and Antonio and the Kasaki Glaceons. The Glaceons decide to bring their Meltank, Milotic, Glade, Mawile, Megalopunny, and Tyranitar, while the Phantoms bring their um, Megatitar, Blacephalon, Blissey, Zoroark, Bellossom, and the Kangaskhan. Uh, to be noted, this is the Kasaki Glaceon's first match with this team. Uh, since uh, last week, they did have to take a forfeit loss um, in their matchup. So uh, let's first. This is their first foray with their squad, and let's see how they do. So the f lead here is going to be Blissey versus Meltank, and they're just going to trade their rocks, which makes total sense. Now out into my Lodic goes the Glaceons, which just takes a Seismic Toss, showing its leftovers, which is really, really interesting. Uh, toxic on here, onto the Blissey, as the Blissey itself misses a Toxic on the Milotic. Milotic's able to get off a Recover, while the Blissey's able to get off a Toxic on it. And now, into the Gallade, who takes a Seismic Toss. Uh, Glade's going to set up an SD directly in front of this Blissey as it is able to get off a Toxic onto it, but uh, that was an interesting play. I actually uh, can't disagree with that play entirely. Um, he went for the Shadow Sneak there on the Blissey. Now, now um, normally that would be silly, but you would also expect a Blissey to switch out from a plus two Glade. Um, but that is just not the case here. Um, he, he was more than likely predicting the uh, Blacephalon to block a potential fighting type move. So uh, that is why he would have gone for the Shadow Sneak there. So both teams are taking significant damage from Poison, but that Drain Punch onto the Blissey is going to bring him back up to full HP. Even after the Life Orb and Toxic, he's still at a very comfortable amount of health. And that Shadow Sneak is actually going to do no damage to that Blacephalon because it is a Zoroark. Very, very good play uh, disguising the Zoroark as Blacephalon to bait that Shadow Sneak there. Uh, very, very smart play. For some reason, he goes for a Grass Knot here. I don't know... I don't understand why you would go for the Grass Knot and not just your Dark-type Stab. Um, especially if you have it disguised, there's no reason to go for anything else. But, um, to each their own, I suppose. Uh, Grass, he was able to outspeed, so Grass not was able to pick up the kill anyway. But, uh, he's now able to just go out into his low punny, click a quick fake out, and then just go for the drain punch and pick up the kill. 
Uh, so down goes the Zoroark. Now into this beautiful sundress of Amon with the Blossom. He's going to eat an Ice Punch and then get off the Sleep Powder on the Low Punny. Very, very important. And now out into the Meltank, who takes a Giga Drain and not well. That is some big, big damage on that Meltank. Blossom doing some work. Heal Bell comes off to get rid of the Poison and the Sleep on, my, on his team while he eats another Giga Drain. And now... Body Slam, it's the Para, full Para there, but it's not going to save him. He's able to get more damage off of this Body Slam, get a crit, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, he's still in range for a Giga Drain to pick up the KO. Now, out into the Mawile here, um, it's going to be able to actually set up a free SD in this thing's face. I don't know why he went for Moonblast, uh, would have gone for a Sleep Powder or something along those lines, because... Uh, Sleep Claws would not have been broken, it would have been safe, but uh, he's able to get off a facade, kill off the uh, kill off the Blossom, and then that Sucker Punch there on the Blacephalon was huge. Uh, having the Sucker Punch was very important to stop Blacephalon from potentially sweeping him at this point, but uh, Fire Punch is going to come out here from the Mega Titar and drop the Mawile. Now, he goes for a Crunch on the Tyranitar, and honestly, um, some of the plays I can you know somewhat justify, but this one I just can't. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me why he would just click crunch on something directly in front of him uh, when he could have potentially had like earthquake or something along those lines. I mean, I don't know what his full set was, but I'm sure there was definitely a move that probably did more in the long run than crunch, but I digress. Uh, but he's actually just going to get hit by a nasty superpower here, dropping the, let's see, uh, the Mega Titar. Kangaskhan's going to come in here and just click Earthquake. Do that minus two defense that he's sitting at. Uh, Kang is going to be able to pick up that KO. But now Lopunny just goes in, drain punches, and picks up the 2-0 win for the Kasaki Glaceons. It's a very back and forth game there. Uh, but I feel the Glaceons definitely had a very clear uh, foothold for a very good portion of this matchup. Able to get in and set up with their main set of sweepers, their wall breakers, and just allowed it for a uh, But hey, fair enough, he was able to pick up the win, and very, very well played on his part. Um, hopefully the Phantoms can bounce back. They are uh, currently 0-2, I believe. So hopefully they'll be able to bounce back after this uh, second loss in a row. But uh, that, let's get on to the next one. Next up, we have my game featuring the Paniola Primarinas and myself taking on... Uh, Logan and the Birmingham Entes. Uh, he decided to bring his Mega Swampert, his uh, Venusaur, his Lapras, his Nine Tails for the Sun for Venusaur, Bouffalant, and the Garchomp. While I brought my Licky Licky, Dusk Noir, uh, Mega Charizard X, Bronzong, Rotom Wash, and the Weavile. So without further ado, let us get into this. We are going to switch sides, though, because I still got to be on my side. He leads with Crusoe, the Lapras, as I lead with my Weavile. I'm going to go straight for a knockoff to kind of scout this thing set. This kind of shows that that is a max HP set. I'm going to go for a second knockoff just in case he wants to switch out. Uh, he's going to go for an Ancient Power. Uh, the reason I went for that second knockoff was just to get more damage on the Lapras, or if he switched into something else. Could have been very, very useful. Plus, uh, for my calcs, it didn't show that he could really do anything to me, but I, you know, Ancient Power is kind of out of nowhere. Really, really interesting prep on his part. Uh, I'm able to actually switch out here now into my Rotom and eat that Ancient Power like it's nothing. He's going to go out into his Garchomp as I take the time to go for a Hidden Power. Uh, I believe I have Hidden Power Grass uh, for the Swampert. So I was going to try to use that to pick off the uh, Lapras, but he's able to get out into his Garchomp. I'm going to eat this Outrage. Uh, and I'm going to be able to get him with a Will-O-Wisp. Now, after this second Outrage here, I'm actually going to be able to go for a Pain Split and steal a whole bunch of his HP, which is really, really great. And now he's actually going to switch out into his Bouffalon, as I'm actually going to bounce out into my Charizard, Mega Evolve, and my special Zard X is actually going to miss a Fire Blast, and that is extremely crucial, as this Earthquake doesn't come out and do a stupid amount of damage. If I had hit that Fire Blast... I would have been able to two-hit KO the Bouffalant, 
So uh, even with that earthquake damage, I would have been able to still go for another fire blast and been in still an okay position. But he's going to earthquake again as I'm going to be able to get my bronze bronzong in for free with the levitate. And I'm going to be able to set up my rocks, which is going to be nice to chip through his team. He goes for the flamethrower and I see that I can definitely live... I was able to actually live a Fire Blast even in the sun, so unless he was like a damage boosting item, I was able to live a Fire Blast in the sun. I assumed he would probably be Heat Rock, so uh, I knew that would could be worked out. That, I knew that could work out for me, so I went for the Earthquake to get some damage off on this thing, which is really, really nice. And now I can actually bounce out to my Licky Licky, who eats the Flamethrower for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that is great. So he goes into the Bouffalant. Eats a body slam and the rocks damage, and that is ridiculously eating. He's gonna go for the earthquake here on my dust noir switch in. Uh, I'm actually speed crept for this thing, so I'm able to toxic it before it can do much more damage to me with the earthquake. Now I'm going to bounce into my Rotom, who takes nothing from that earthquake due to its nice levitate ability. Now I'm going to vault switch from the Rotom into my Bronzong, essentially sacking it. At this point, and uh, he actually goes for the all-out pummeling, which is really really cool. So I'm actually able to sack Bronzong, but I'm only but, but really not lose much in this match. Uh, Dust Noir is going to be able to come back out and hit him with an ice punch, and then follow up after the rocks and take out the Lapras with the Shadow Sneak. So no more rain for his Mega Swampert, which is really really great. He's going to go into his Swampert and he's going to go for the waterfall, non-rain boosted. Uh, would have been really great if that didn't flinch me because I was I well I was definitely going for a will o wisp there, but uh, that's fine. Uh, I didn't want to chance the rolls so or him going for earthquake so I do go into my rotom I know I can eat me hit, and uh, he's gonna, just gonna go out into his nine tails predicting the will o wisp which is a very smart play on his part. And he's going to go for a Solar Beam. I'm actually going to get crit, but that doesn't really matter because Licky Licky's super fat, and I love it. Uh, just eat another Solar Beam like it's nothing. I'm just going to go for Body Slam and kill this thing off. He's going to actually be able to now go out into his uh, Venusaur, get off a Giga Drain. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to be able to get a Body Slam on him. Unfortunately, no Paralysis, because why would I? And he's going to be able to kill me off with another Giga Drain. But now I can safely go into Weavile now that the sun is gone, and I miss an Icicle Crash, dude. Why? But now I had Icicle Crash again. I'm actually able to hit this one and kill him off. He's going to go out into his Swampert here. And this is actually a really, really good play uh, after this. He goes for the Waterfall here, just trying to pick up the kill. And he goes for an Ice Punch. And he gets burned. Which is it's all, it's all well and good. But now he sets up his Rocks. So, the thing about him having his rocks up now is I can't go out into either of my big offensive threats to clean up the game. I mean, both of his left remaining bonds were bur mods were burned. The game is pretty much over at this point because I'm able to HP grass and beat down the Swampert. But uh, putting up those rocks really hindered my offensive monsters from doing anything at all at this point in the game. Which is really unfortunate, but it's also really cool because pretty much all the kills in this matchup, outside of the one kill Weavile got on the Venusaur, were picked up by... Uh, my walls in Dust and Wire and uh, Rotom. And I believe Licky Licky, yeah, Licky Licky got the kill as well. So all of my walls were getting all the kills this week, which is really cool. But um, yeah, another another big win here. Uh, the Primarinas go to 2 0, while the Entes sit at a clean 1 1 after they picked up a forfeit win the previous week. Or, for, yeah, forfeit win the previous week. But uh, yeah. On to the next. Oh, the game I've been dreading going over because I don't want to watch it again, but I know I gotta. Uh, we have Chris and the Phoenix Infernos, Gobalion, Mudsdale, Electrode, Alola Ninetales, Umbreon, and Salamence taking on Kieran and the London Ludicolos with their Mega Garchomp, Mimikyu, uh, Gyarados, 
Amoongus, Swallow, and Tauros. Let's hop into this. So we see Amoongus lead off against the Electrode. Electrode's going to just go for an HP Ice, do basically no damage, and then get caught with a Spore. Uh, out into the Salamence he goes, as a Giga Drain's going to come out and do no damage, even with the crit. Now, Amoongus can't stay in here safely, so he's going to switch out. The Salamence is going to go for a Fly here, as the Gyarados actually goes up for a Bounce. So, huge damage on the Gyarados immediately, while the um, Bounce is shown here. So, Mentz actually takes a ballsy play to go for a Dragon Dance, knowing the bounce is incoming. Stab Bounce from Gyarados is going to do a lot of damage, and actually has a chance to para, but the bounce misses. This is crucial to this game. So you need to look at the crunch off, kill the Gyarados there, and get a Moxie boost. Now, for some reason, now, now this is going to be a running theme. He has a Mimikyu right here, with a Disguise, and the ability to just click play rough and kill this Mets. With, without any effort, just kill the Mets. Play rough into Shadow Sneak and just kill Mets. Right? Easy. But this is this is turn one of him not just going into that. Uh, so the Super Sonic Strike Tag comes out. Obviously, that's going to Oko the Amoongus at plus two. Uh, now he's at plus three and into the Mega Garchomp just to take a Dragon Claw and die. So that is turn two of not going into Mimikyu. Turn two, ladies and gentlemen. Turn two. Turn 3 of not going into Mimikyu, he goes into Tauros to totally not eat this Dragon Claw. And boom, Moxie is just racking up. Another Dragon Claw for Swallow on turn 4 of not going into Mimikyu. So, one Mon died. He had a Mon that completely countered it. But then four other Mons died anyway. Kieran, Kieran if, you, if you watch this... Hit me up and explain what what happened, what what happened here. But um, now since he has no other options left, he's gonna go into Mimikyu. Uh, he's gonna eat the crunch because of disguise, and he's gonna go for his never-ending nightmare, and drop him down within range of a shadow sneak. <sighs> if only he had done that five turns ago, he would have had a Mimikyu. Granted, with a Pop Disguise, but also a Mega Garchomp, an Amoongus, a Swallow, and a Tauros. But, he didn't. And, at this point, all Chris has to do is go into his Cobalion with its Air Balloon, click Iron Head, Oko the Mimikyu, and it's a 5-0 win for the Phoenix Infernos without any real effort, to be fair. Um, this is my pick for one of the, hopefully no other games are worse than this this season uh, this is probably the most difficult game to watch uh, just just ugh if you have a clear counter to someone trying to sweep you go into it after amon dies just just do it like that whole game could have been a thousand times different I'm not saying one side would have definitely won instead. I'm not saying Kieran could have beat Chris. But it definitely wouldn't have been a 5-0 with a clean 5-kill sweep on Mentz without any real effort. That's all I'm saying. But, um, I guess GG to Chris. He picks up a big win for Week 2. Now on to the next all right, here we have the Todd Glissapons coached by Alex here with their Empoleon Shaman, Kieran Black, I believe it's Mega Scizor, Hippowodon, and Simiseer taking on the Meowston Rockets with their Dragology, Jellicent, uh, Jirachi, Mega Agron, Regigigas, and the Chestnut. So let's hop into this one. We see a Hippowdon lead against the Dragalge, picking up, setting up that Sandstream. Dragalge sets up Toxic Spikes, and apparently that must be worth it, because that Earthquake comes out and does stupid damage. And now, free rocks for the Hippowdon there, as the Jellicent's going to come in. Polion's able to easily swap in, eat that Skull like it's nothing, but gets burned. It's unfortunate just to have that little chip cancelling out his leftovers every turn. 
the hex is going to do a little bit of chip, and the Empoleon is actually going to be able to roar and get the uh, Regigigas in on those rocks. Get some chip damage on a few mons, and get him in on the Sandstorm as well. Regigigas goes for a power-up punch here, as the Empoleon is just going to go for another roar, and bring in the Agron, who's going to get chipped once again. Agron's going to Mega Evolve here, as the Empoleon actually goes for its Defog, proving that it is the best Defogger in League format. Shout out to the GBA analysts. He's going to be able to defog successfully again as the Earthquake's now going to come out and kill the Empoleon. So two successful defogs in a row in that match. Really, really good play. Heavy Slam comes out from the Mega Agron as the Earth Power does minimal damage from the Shaman. But Earth Power, he's a persistent Shaman. And uh, now the rocks go back up, unfortunately. Empoleon's down, so he's not going to be able to defog successfully again. But Earth Power is actually going to be able to pick up the kill there on the Agron. U-turn comes out from this Jirachi, which potentially could be scarfed at this point, as another Earth Power is going to come out on this incoming Dragalgy. So Shaman is already on fire, picking up two straight kills. Air Slash comes out and is going to annihilate that Chestnut, picking up kill number three. Bluffed the choice that whole time and amazingly played. Um, so an Earth Power is going to come out here on this Regigigas as it comes in, and then a Giga Drain to get some decent HP back. But the power up and the power punch is just not going to be enough damage. Another Giga Drain is going to take him, I believe, out of range. Oh no! I pop a berry as the Drain Punch is actually going to bring himself even more health. Ooh, this beautiful creature! Creature! Oh, beautiful! The Drain Punch is going to come out onto the Hippowdon, who is then able to toxic the Regigigas. And it takes, like, no damage from anything this thing does. Even now that the slow start is gone, 28% is nothing at plus one to this Hippowdon. Just nothing at all. Between the Toxic and the Sandstorm, this Hippowdon is about to whittle this Regigigas down, slacking off to easily just stall through this Regigigas' life. Train Punch is not going to be able to recover nearly enough HP, as the Hippowdon gets up pretty much to full. Drain Punch comes out again, and at this point, he just has to click Slack off, and he gets that free Toxic Death on the, onto the uh, Regigigas. The Toxic comes out here onto the Jellicent, and now he's just able to start stalling once again against this thing. He goes for the Earthquake on the switch into the Jirachi, doing a massive chunk of damage. Now the Jirachi's going to U-turn out into the Jellicent as another Earthquake is going to come out. At this point, Hippowdon just has to sit here, uh, eats that Scald, like it's nothing, goes for the Slack off, and it appears that the, the it's just not doing enough damage. The Scald is just not doing the damage it needs to. Uh, the Slack off is bringing him pretty much right back up to where he needs to be to live these Scalds. Hex does actually less damage. I don't know why he would go for Hex. If he had kept going for Scalds, he actually might have been able to whittle it down just enough with the burn damage to pick up the kill. He's able to slack off back up to full. Uh, Ice Punch does no damage from this Jirachi as the Earthquake is going to bring it down in range of another one. So, at this point, the Rockets actually decide to forfeit. Um, one thing we don't recommend forfeiting in this league, um, just play the game out. Like This isn't like on the showdown ladder. Don't just get like, alright, I lost, forfeit. Just play it out. It's for kills and deaths purposes. It's You, know, if, you never know what can happen. So, um, just for future reference for the coaches in the league, you know, try to play your games out at least. I understand, yes, there was no way that he was going to beat this Hippowdon. Earthquake was going to pick up the kill on the Jirachi the following turn, as the Toxic then was going to be able to stall out the Jellicent if he didn't just kill him with an Earthquake. So, uh, Hippowdon definitely had the game there. It was just a matter of time. Although Jellicent could have come in gone for a Scald and fairly easily uh, picked up the kill as well, but we don't know what could have happened uh, because of the forfeit. So, With that being said, um, that is it for that game. GG to the uh, Todd Glissopods as they pick up a very, very big win in week two here. Now on to the next. The next game we have here is the Parma Poi Poles, I believe coached by Nathan. Taking on Jay and the Orlando Magikarp. Jay brings his Magirna Rhyperior uh, 
Porygon 2, Mesprit, the Metacham, which I do believe is a Mega, we'll see in the matchup, and the Malamar, while the Poipoles bring their Alolan Marowak, Mega Gallade, Silvali, uh, Lycanroc, the Tentacruel, and the Necrozma. So, into the match we go with the Malamar, leading off against this uh, Tentacruel, and it goes straight for a superpower and just gains that those boosts. Picking up those boosts with another superpower to the Tentacruel, who eats, 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 and gets its Citrus Berry. Uh, now out into the Necrozma on this superpower again. I'm actually starting to think that this thing is definitely scarfed. Uh, we're up to plus four of these superpowers now as the Z Stealth Rock comes out for the plus one defense on Necrozma. It's a very interesting tech move, very interesting tech move. We're going to be able to use another superpower to get to plus five, and this next superpower is actually going to kill Necrozma. So, Scarf superpower here, but we're now going to just go straight out into the Marowak. And now the Marowak, now it's just time for the Marowak to clean up. You can see... Uh, Marowak is obviously immune to the superpower and forces out the Malamar into the Magirna, who just just dies. Just just dies to this Flare Blitz. Just get out of here, Magirna. Goodbye. Into the Metacham now, who is going to get the Toxic Poison and the Rocks damage. We go straight for his end headbutt, which does a stupid amount of damage, but Shadow Bone is able to pick up the KO. Marowak is on a tear, ladies and gentlemen. Out into Mesprit, who's going to go for the Shattered Psyche and kill the Marowak. Out into the Lycanroc Midnight, who goes for a Sucker Punch, revealing its Life Orb, doing massive damage to the Mesprit, who goes for an Ice Beam. Stone Edge is going to come out here and uh, KO the Mesprit, while the Malamar is going to be able to come back out and go for a... or get hit by a Sucker Punch, and be able to kill off the Lycanroc with a knockoff, which is very, very good. Another knockoff is going to come out here and onto this Tentacruel, who doesn't appear to be holding an item? Or was it knocked off earlier? No, it was not knocked off earlier because the Malamar only went for a... Um... Huh. He brought Tentacruel without an item. That is actually very, very interesting tech, if that was intentional. Very, very, very interesting tech. Very, very cool. No, wait, he ate the Citrus Berry. That. Never mind. But the knockoff is going to be unable to pick up the kill as the Tentacruel is going to be able to take out the Malamar. P2 comes out, takes this Skull to the face without even worrying, and goes for the T-Ball, is able to take out the Tentacruel, but that Toxic Poison is going to really be a problem as the Mega Glade comes out and is just able to close combat and take out the P2. With those minus defenses, it's kind of a problem. He's kind of worried now. Uh, Rhyperior is able to come in, eat a close combat because of that solid rock ability. Now he's at minus two defense. This earthquake is going to take out the Mega Gallade. But with being at such low health, in comes Silvali fighting, who just goes for a multi attack and finishes off the game, picking the Parma Poi pulls up their first win of the season 1 uh, 0 over the Orlando Magikarp. Uh, GG to the Poi Poles. Uh, very, very well played game on both sides. Very, very solid. Uh, that hazard stack was a problem. Um, yeah. Really, really good game overall. And uh, now on to the next one. Alright, now we are here with uh, Rennie and the New York Dialgas with their Mega Manectric, Heatran, Mama Swine, Espeon hiding behind that Metagross leg there. Metagross and Talonflame taking on, I believe, the uh, Baltimore Predacons and their uh, Salazzle, Wishy Washy, Slacking, Latios, which is actually supposed to be Mega Latios. He actually misread it um, when he built the team. And just, just he, he messed up a little bit. It's uh, it's whatever. It happens. Uh, it doesn't really end up affecting the battle in any way whatsoever, outside of um, the kill leaders and whatnot for Mega Latios. It just doesn't get anything this week. Uh, Tapu Bulu and the Reggie Steel. So uh, I will say definitely uh, one side definitely has one of the performances of the week. It's a very, very well played game. So let's just hop into it. We see the Mammoth Swine lead off here against the Reggie Steel and immediately just go straight for the Earthquake. No reason to not. And the weakness policy pops. Now, um, I understand going for the rocks, turn one. 
but uh, not going for a move like Iron Head there, uh, knowing that you're staring down something that can pop your weakest policy. Um, I definitely disagree with that play myself. Um, knowing you have the weakness policy, you might as well just go straight for that potentially super effective Iron Head on this Mammoth Swine to potentially knock it out because you don't know what kind of set it is just yet. But um, it's able to just go for another Earthquake here and kill it off. Uh, now into the top of Bulu, uh, Mammoth Swine switches more than likely Scarfed in some manner uh, as it goes for a Wood Hammer, which does a stupid amount of damage to that Metagross. He, does, Metagross does not take that as well as he would have liked. Meteor Mash comes out here and gets the attack boost on the incoming Wishy Washy. And another one comes out. Oh, nasty. I believe H there's an HP Fire or HP Ground on that Wishy Washy. It's actually able to. Um, actually able to. Um, whatchamacallit? Actually able to bring it down pretty low as now is Wishy Washy Baby Form. Uh, a Meteor Mash misses, and the Scald actually comes out and almost picks up the KO on Metagross. If if a Wishy Washy non school form had actually picked up a kill in this league, I would have absolutely shit my pants laughing. But um, Wishy Washy is going to go down to that Meteor Mash there. In comes Salazzle, who would have easily been able to take that thing out. It goes for a knockoff on the incoming Heatran. Very smart play there. Uh, it's now going to be able to toxic the Heatran due to its corrosion ability as the Heatran gets up its rocks. Another knockoff here, though. Uh, which is a really, really interesting play. I uh, just get more chip on the Heatran as it gets toxic down. Slacking is able to come in and just go for an EQ and get rid of that. Metagross comes out here. Uh, obviously, gonna have to swap there because of that Truant ability. Meteor Mesh is actually just gonna straight Oko the Salazzle after the rocks, which is really, really interesting. Uh, the Salazzle has no defenses though, so uh, definitely just gets dropped there. Uh, the Latios comes in, uh, the illegal Latios. And he's actually going to Mega Evolve and just go straight for a Waterfall, which kills the incoming Talonflame, which is fine. Now the Mammo, I believe, believing to be Scarfed, uh, just comes in, clicks Icicle Crash. Uh, Slacking comes out, gets Icicle Crashed. Uh, the Earthquake does next to no damage to the Mammoth Swine. Crashed again. He's Truant. Gets Crashed one more time. Drops. And then Icicle Crash is going to, to be able to, if I believe correctly... Just drop this Bulu. So, GG. Uh, Renny played really, really well around a lot of uh, Predacon's threats. And he goes to a nice clean 2-0 uh, with this. Uh, making Mamoswine also one of the main kill leaders. We'll get to that later. But, uh, yeah. Very, very good game there. Um, by the New York Dialgas. Moving right along, we have Rich and the Washington Weavers with their Protean Greninja, Celebi, uh, Mega Gardevoir, Ditto, Altaria, and Arcanine taking on the main Black Bear Ticks, coached by Chad uh, with his Mega Venusaur, Ludicolo, Tornadus Incarnate, uh, Curum, Suicune, and Scizor. Let's hop right into this one. We see the Mega Gardevoir lead off against the Ludicolo and goes straight for a hard hitting Hyper Voice. Ludicolo is going to fire off a Hydro Pump and just not do enough damage. Is he actually going to drop straight out to that Psy Shock? Um, very questionable because he could have potentially saved the Ludicolo for later. Um, having something like Scizor that could easily just switch into a Hyper Voice or a Psy Shock, easily turn one, uh, and then just go for that Stab Technician boosted, and I believe in this match Life Orb boosted Bullet Punch and just Oko this thing. Very questionable in my opinion, but um, that's fine. He's going to go in out into his Tornadus. Uh, the Altera is going to switch out and eat this uh, Sludge Wave. Goes for an Ice Beam, showing that it is in fact Scarfed, as the Tornadus goes for a Supersonic Sky Strike and takes out the Altaria. Now, very interesting play here. Uh, the, tornado the Tornadus is actually going to set up the Tailwind for the rest of his team, as the Greninja actually goes for a Rock Slide to take out the Torn. Uh, very, very interesting there. And now we see, shockingly, Greninja lives a hit, first of all. Um, taking that Earth Power from the Curum, very, very, just barely living, and being able to fire off an all-out pummeling on this Curum. Down it goes. Jesus. There, there it goes. Low Kick comes out here as the Scizor is now going to set up an SD on this 
uh, Greninja, but at this point he is forced to uh, go for the bullet punch and then stay in here because he doesn't have a switch in really to the Arcanine. Actually, he does have a switch into the Arcanine. It's called Suicune, but uh, we're going to pretend that that's not real. Uh, mind you, this game was also played at like 7 o'clock this morning EST. 7 or 8 this morning because of, you know, travel and everything else. Just really, really weird shit happened um, due to the scheduling of this game. So that might have played a factor in um, in how this match went for the Bear Ticks, But nonetheless, you know, hey, what can, what can you do? He goes now into the Suicune on the Arcanine, which obviously has to swap as the Scald comes out onto the Celebi. And normally a burn wouldn't matter on this, but it reveals to be a physical Celebi. So uh, Ice Beam is going to come out there, do some damage, but Seed Bomb is just doing significantly more. Such a such big damage coming out from the Celebi here. Another Ice Beam is going to do very minimal damage, not nearly enough, and the Seed Bomb is going to come out and finish it off. Now into the Mega Venusaur here, who is going to be able to uh, eat, chew one Zen Headbutt, and be able to finish it off with a Sludge Bomb, but that allows the... Uh, Venusaur to, or the Ditto to come in, copy the Venusaur, and outspeed and go for a Sludge Bomb to pick up the 3-0 win for the Washington Weavers. Big win to pick up this week to uh, gain some form of momento on their side as we move into the rest of the season. And now we head into the next game. The next game we have pits our Mono Water Coach, uh... Chris and the Kalamazoo Kingdras with his Azumarill, Huntail, Basculin, Gastrodon, Politoed, and Mega Slowbro taking on the uh, Flashing Blade Pichus with Feraligator, Meowstic Female, Dewblade, Comfey, uh, Latios, I believe Mega? No, not Latios Mega. It's regular Latios and Mega Charizard Y. Yes. Uh, so let's hop into this one, see what happens. We got Meowstic leading here against the Azumarill, going for the T-Wave immediately, not dealing with any of its bullshit, as it's actually going to go for the Whirlpool. So does the trapping set is the defensive trapping set again. Psychic does nothing to this Azumarill, assuming, assuming to be specially defensive, and revealing the leftovers there. Goes for the Protect to stall out some Whirlpool turns as the Thunderbolt comes out from the Meowstic. Uh, Psychic here is going to drop it down decently low, and a Toxic comes out here to quicken the process of the Whirlpool and Toxic Kill, and all he has to do here is click Protect, and the Meowstic is actually just going to go straight down to the Toxic and the Whirlpool. So Azumarill picking himself up another kill this week. Dewblade's going to go for an SD in its face as the Parish Song comes out from the Azumarill. The Azumarill is going to go for a Protect in the Dewblade's face as it lowers down that Parish count. But now, Dewroot not being trapped is actually going to be able to switch out into the Comfey, uh, who does get trapped by a Whirlpool, but uh, forces the Azumarill out due to its own Parish count. Uh, Comfey is able to get up a Calm Mind on this Politoed and get up a second one as well, as the Politoed is now going to go for an Encore and Encore into that Calm Mind, which is definitely a problem as he's now able to just go straight out into Basculin. Has to double back into the Azumarill as the Latios goes for a Shattered Psyche. Uh, it may have been predicting a Draco, might have been predicting a Dragonium, but that is fine. Uh, we see there that the Azumarill uh, probably went for Protect, but that actually, either way, the para doesn't matter because uh, the Latios went for a Calm Mind. Uh, now with that Calm Mind, Psychic is going to be able to take out the Azumarill, and now into the Huntail we go. He it turns out to have the Energy Ball and knocks him down to a Sash. Uh, he gets up to the plus two with his shell smashes, and he actually goes for a crunch instead of a sucker punch, which is very interesting. Um, but he has, also has the sucker punch, so he gets off the crunch and sucker punch on the dew blades, and able to actually kill off the um, dew blade there, which is nice. A priority draining kiss from the Kumfe is actually able to take out. We're gonna pause for a second here and get ourselves caught up. Priority draining kiss takes out the hunt tail as now the Comfey is able to taunt the incoming Mega Slowbro so it cannot set up a Calm Mind, while it is able to Calm Mind in the Slowbro's face, which is very big. Uh, Slowbro gets the burn on that Scald there, which is kind of annoying for the Comfey, but is able to just set up another Calm Mind here. Now it can actually go for a Draining Kiss and actually start getting some damage off and get some HP back, 
and it gets awkward. Now, this is not a very bad situation here for um, for the Pichus, as Comfey can continue to do significant damage with its draining kisses on this Politoed, and potentially could just end up leading towards a potential victory. Um, however, um, I do believe uh, he goes for another draining kiss here, eats a skull very easily, not really too big of an issue here, and uh, then decides to switch. Um, that's very questionable in my opinion because Straining Kiss would have done significant damage to the Slowbro, significant damage to the Gastrodon, as well as being able to kill Politoed and do significant damage to the Basculin as well. I don't really see why he swapped out there because A, the Encore was also going to end soon, so he could have potentially started to heal himself up, get some Calm Minds up, more Calm Minds up, and potentially just won the game outright with Comfey at that point in time. So, um, questionable play, for sure. Very, very questionable. I can't really see any reasoning for that, but, uh, he's gonna switch out to his Latios, get hit by the skull, and actually get burned, which is very unfortunate. He's just gonna go for a Calm Mind here in the Politoed's face as it comes out with an Ice Beam to lower it down. Uh, Latios is just gonna go for an Energy Ball now and pick off the Politoed. Into the gas, into the basket, let me go and reveals that it is in fact scarfed. Goes for the waterfall and KOs the Lottie. Uh, Charizard's gonna come out here now, uh, putting up the sun and eating that waterfall, chewing that thing after that with the sun lowering that water type damage. Is able to kill it with a solar beam. Charizard goes for solar beam on the Gastrodon, thinking it's safe, and oh no, it is Rindo Berry with mirror coat. It drops the Zard immediately which is super unfortunate. Uh, Dragon Claw from the Feraligator slash the Ice Punch from Feraligator just doesn't do enough to pick up the kill on this Gastrodon. It's just going to be able to recover consistently and get a Toxic on this Feraligator. Ice Punch puts it down a little bit, but it's able to just continuously recover here. You're going to see it's going to recover a bunch, get back up to pretty much full, and now Ice Punch does nothing to that Slowbro who comes in. Takes a crunch, but again, it just does no damage. It's able to get up a calm mind. Gator eats a lychee berry and is able to do much more damage with this crunch this time, which is very, very significant. But it drops to the toxic from the Gastrodon into the Comfey, who actually goes for a calm mind first as the Scald comes out. Going for that calm mind, then being able to go for a synthesis on the next Scald. Uh, he's essentially just waiting for uh, the burn to kill him at this point because with the scald and burn damage, he's being put constantly in range. And uh, again, that was just questionable. Um, Slowbro, even at plus two special defense, has does not have the best special defense of being plus one special attack. Could have actually potentially picked up a KO there. And if he had the Giga Drain like he had prior weeks, he actually probably could have won that game. Uh, he also could have potentially won that game when he had his Comfey sending it plus two, plus two and uh, decided to switch out for some reason. But regardless, uh, the the Kingdras pick up a 2-0 win and remain undefeated with their Mono Water team here in the NPBS. Next up, another game with a bit of a disclaimer. Um, we have the Driftvale Drillbers with their Rotom Heat, Kartana, Cacturn, Hitmontop, Mega Ampharos and uh, Reuniclus against the Atlanta Dragonites with their Tapu Koko, Haxorus, Crobat, Meloetta, uh, regular Charizard, and Seismitoad. Um, David, the coach of the um, Dragonites, uh, went through a very, very difficult uh, personal issue this past week. Uh, I actually ended up building his team for him. Uh, I passed it to him and gave him probably the best possible team I could, um, but obviously his mind's not going to be in it, and I completely understand. Um, I know for myself, and I'm sure all the other coaches in the MPBF, we send all of our thoughts and well wishes to David and his family during this time, and uh, hope that things get better soon. But um, without further ado, let's get into this game. He's going to lead with his Meloetta against the Cacturn. And he's going to go for the close combat, showing that he is, in fact, a pirouette form Meloetta. He has the ability to go pirouette, uh, but doesn't go for the Relic Song first. So the close combat is not going to be able to pick up the KO. 
Um, Seed Bomb is going to do a very significant amount of damage to that uh, Meloetta, and the Close Combat into the Spiky Shield is going to do even more chip. Uh, he's going to swap out now into the Charizard as the Reuniclus comes in. Uh, Charizard goes for the Toxic, but unfortunately misses as the Reuniclus goes for an Iron Defense. Obviously doesn't want to take that Toxic, so it's going to go out into the Kartana, and now double back out into the Rotom on the incoming Flamethrower. Sidem is able to come in here as the light screen goes up for the Drillvers. Uh, knockoff comes out here, knocks off the Sash from the Cacturn, as it's now going to go for a Drain Punch behind that light screen, uh, hitting that Rocky Helmet defensive Charizard as it's going to be toxic by that Zard now. Uh, Seed Bomb does no damage as the Flamethrower, but through the light screen, is going to be able to pick up the kill on that Cacturn. Into Fabio he goes uh, with the Mega Ampharos. He's actually going to set up an agility on this incoming Seismitoad. Uh, Dragon Pulse here is going to do a significant chunk of damage as the Earth Power, because of the light screen, does very, very little. Uh, if the light screen had gone, this actually would have potentially been a two hit KO. But unfortunately, due to that light screen, it was not. Uh, the Crobat is going to come out, go for a U turn, and get some extra chip on that. Uh, Ampharos, as he actually just sacks the Zard there, which is, I, I personally disagreed with that play, but, um, again, mine definitely wasn't with it. Uh, he goes out to the Coco, uh, is able to get off a super effective Crit Dazzle Gleam on that Fabio and take it out. Uh, Kartana comes in and goes for a Z Tailwind, uh, again, he brings the same strat, uh, he goes for the Leaf Blade, he's able to pick up the kill on the Meloetta. So Kartana on a roll here. It goes for the knockoff here, uh, gets rid of the Choice Scarf on the Crobat, and the Heat Wave misses. That was an actually very important tech that um, I included on the Crobat, because even with just Jolly and some speed investment, or even Adamant with speed investment, I'm pretty sure it was Jolly with enough speed outspeed Kartana, just in case of a Scarf Cart, um, it would be able to guarantee one hit KO the Kartana if it wasn't sashed. And in this case, obviously it wasn't sashed because it was the Z Tailwind variant. So uh, the Heat Wave would have killed the Kartana here, uh, which would have been extremely helpful and uh, probably still would have allowed, would have actually potentially allowed David to uh, maybe not win the game, but uh, come a lot closer. Uh, the Sacred Sword here is going to take out the uh, Crobat. He goes into his Haxorus. Uh, knockoff does a very massive amount as the Dragon Dance comes out, and Haxorus goes for an Earthquake and uh, gets killed by a Leaf Blade. Uh, that Mon was actually a uh, Dragon Dance Poisonium Z variant because the opponent did have a Fairy that could have Fairy or two, I believe, that could have blocked uh, other Z moves. So having that Z specifically to break through that was very nice and could have, you know, with Moldbreaker Earthquake broken through Rotom Heat and then just punched holes through things like Reuniclus and uh, hit on top with the Dragon Dancer 2 up. So uh, that's not very unfortunate. It didn't work out for him. And into the top of Coco, obviously without the Tailwind, he's going to be slower. So uh, Thunderbolt comes out and kills the Rotana. No problem. Uh, Dazzling Gleam is going to hit this Easy Bake Oven, but now that the light screen is up, it does no damage. Uh, he's going to be able to Volt Switch out here go into the Hitmontop, who is just going to swallow this Dazzling Gleam and go for an EQ and just eventually kill off the Tapu Koko. So uh, picking up a big 3-0 win for the Drillbers in week two. Um, again, uh, very sorry for David going through what he has to go through right now, and I hope things get better soon. But without further ado, let's get on to our final game for week two. The last game for this week features the Jerusalem Jirachis, uh, coached by somebody, coached by yada 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 scroll, a scroll here. Um. Hmm. Is that Gavino? I believe it's Gavino. I'm just going to assume it's Gavino, because I'm going to assume that it's Gavino, but I could be wrong. 
I will correct myself if I am wrong. I am right. Um, but regardless, uh, Gavino and the Jerusalem Jirachis with their Chansey, Typhlosion, Lander, Snarian, <coughs> Mega Gyarados, the uh, Galvantula, and the Dusclops against the previous season's champion, David, and the Wellington Whirlwinds with their Vaporeon Fortress, Slurpuff, Pyroar, uh, Hoopa, and Lucario. So without further ado, let us get into this game. We see a lead of the web setters between Slurpuff and Galvantula. Galvantula goes for a Volt Switch, and actually, this is such a cool little tech, uh, predicting the lead matchup against the uh, Galvantula uh, with the Cell Battery on the Slurpuff to pop the Cell Battery, get an attack boost, and uh, in fact be able to um, get its Unburden boost as well. Uh, so he's going to go out into the Dusclops as the Slurpuff is actually just going to go straight for its webs. Slurpuff is then going to go for a Calm Mind in the face of this Dusclops. And this Dusclops, with only one eye, is very blind. Gets a second Calm Mind as it misses a Toxic and a Will-O-Wisp. And another Toxic miss. Another big Toxic miss. Very, very unfortunate. Uh, two Dazzling Gleams back-to-back is going to lead to a Pain Split from the Dusclops, which brings down the Slurpuff significantly to a super low amount of HP, but a Dazzling Gleam is going to be able to pick off the kill on the, um, on the, uh, whatchamacallit, on the Dusclops. Um, I wouldn't say this is a misplay, but I believe maybe a misprep. If you were going to include the Cell Battery, maybe I would have included, like, something like Drain Punch for a situation against, like, Chansey here, um, but that's me. Uh, if you're going to do a cool tech like that to boost your attack, maybe add something like the, uh, the, the, the Drain Punch, which could have been really, really useful here. If he had actually had the Drain Punch here, uh, this thing probably would have lasted a little bit longer. But he is just going to go for the Dazzling Gleam, get some chip, and the Seismic Toss is going to take out the Slurpuff. Uh, into the Hoopla he goes as the Lando is going to come in and take a knockoff, getting some significant damage. Uh, obviously, Hoopa's going to switch because it knows that Lando typically clicks U-turn, and Lando's actually going to get the Defog off. Lando having Defog in this generation is just stupid, making it a broken-ass Pokemon. Um, the Leftovers are going to be knocked off of this uh, Fortress as the Fortress sets up its Stealth Rocks. Lando's going to be able to Earthquake the Fortress as a Gyro Ball comes out. Lando's going to Defog away those rocks as another Gyro Ball comes out on the Landorus. And the uh, Fortress is actually going to be able to gyro ball and beat the Lando 1v1. Uh, Galvantula comes in, gets off another Volt Switch, and kills off the Fortress. The uh, Hoopa is actually able to come in here and knock off the Eviolite from the Chansey as it actually gets Thunder Wave, which is very unfortunate. Vaporeon switches in as the Chansey goes for a Soft Boiled, gaining back all its HP. And then the Vaporeon is actually going to go for Heal Bell and remove the Paralysis from the Hoopa um, in the face of the switch-in of Galvantula. Uh, Galvantula sets up its Sticky Webs as the Vaporeon goes for Toxic, but now at this point it's just too late. Uh, Galvantula is in, is in the zone. It's going to be able to uh, hit this Energy Ball on the Hoopa on the switch-in as it then go for bug, that four times effective Bug Buzz and kill it off. A Volt Switch here onto the Pyroar, into the Chansey, uh, allows the Hyper Voice to do next to no damage. The Whirlwinds are going to go out now into their Lucario, who loses that speed and is a, going to go straight, I believe, for a Stone Edge on the, after the Intimidate from the Gyarados. It's not going to do enough. Because of the fact that it is Mega, it's not going to be able to pick up the kill here. He's actually able to set up a Dragon Dance, and from here it is G. G Waterfall is going to take out the Lucario. Then the Crunch is going to be able to put the Vaporeon down extremely low and then eventually take it out. While the Pyroar is then going to come in and just die to a Waterfall. So uh, seeing David fall week two, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's upset, but it's definitely not something any of us would have expected. 
to see. Um, very, very good game from Givino and the Jerusalem Jirachis, knocking off the last season's champion in week two here. But um, that's going to conclude with our last game. Now let's move over to the kill leaders. Alrighty, guys, after two weeks worth of action, we are now going to be looking at the kill leaders so far for the season. I'm going to be keeping tabs on this as regularly as possible and getting them up to date each and every week. And right now we have our top 10 most dangerous mons to look for in this league so far. And mons that you might potentially want to uh, knock down the totem pole if you get the chance. But uh, the first mon leading out the pack in the gold spot, taking the gold. This week is Halucha from the Cleveland Typhlosions, coached by Ethan, picking up an impressive 7 kills and only a single death with a plus 6 differential. Now, before we get too far into this, I will explain how things are ranked. Um, step 1 is I rank them by the number by their differential. So if they have similar differential, they'll all be in roughly the same category. But if they get more kills then others in that differential block, they'll be ranked above. If they have the same number of kills and deaths, then they are sorted by alphabetical order, simply just because that's how Excel works. So uh, that is how things work, but Halucha sitting up here with seven kills, one death, being the current kill leader in the league. Can anyone stop it? Hopefully someone can, because Halucha is a massive pain if you don't deal with it properly. Right behind him, tied essentially for second place, covering the silver and bronze blocks, are Mamoswine from the New York Dialgos, coached by Rennie, and Zerkatry from the Baltimore Predacons, coached by Nathaniel. Uh, Mamoswine picking up an impressive four kills this week and two kills the week prior without dying once. Mamoswine is a massively threatening Pokemon and needs to be checked properly. If you don't check Mamoswine properly, you will lose to Mamo, guaranteed. It is that strong of a Mon. You, if you don't have a switch in, find a switch in, period. This thing is a threat, uh, 100%. And the Zergatry, uh, week one, y'all saw the domination that it did with its 6-0 sweep over the Grand Bulls. Uh, has not been topped since has been sitting up here near the top uh, very comfortably. So with that, that is going to get us past our top three, and now we move into the rest of the pack. We see we have a three-way tie for fourth place between Comfey from the Flash and Blade Pichus, uh, Mega Gyarados from the Jerusalem Jirachis, and Weavile from the Paniola Primarinas, all sitting at five and one with plus four differentials. Following closely behind uh, is Galavantula from the Jerusalem Jirachis, 4-0 with a plus 4 differential. Uh, Mimikyu and Salamence, ironically, due to this week's matchup between the two, uh, Mimikyu and Salamence are both tied currently at 5-2 with both plus 3 differentials. And closing out the pack is the other offensive threat from Cleveland, Lycanroc Dusk Form with four kills and a single death. All of these mons have been very, very threatening. All of them have actually picked up some decent sweeps or just some very, very well-played kills over the past two weeks. And it'll be interesting to see how this uh, shapes up as the weeks go on and um, the kill leaders get tossed around. But with that, though, guys, we are going to end off here if you guys have enjoyed this, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you have not already. If you guys are enjoying these NPBF recaps, let me know. Uh, it's really been a lot of fun to do these, so I'm looking forward to continuing to do so throughout the rest of the season. With that, though, I'm Poke Primer, guys, and I am signing off. Peace.